Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and in today's video, I'm going to be reviewing the Tesla Model Y Long Range. Before we get into this video, I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to the Doug Smith Kia here in American Fork, Utah, for giving me some time with this Tesla. They just got this Model Y Long Range traded in, so if you're interested, I'll include a link to their website in the description down below so you can reach out to them. And then on a side note, if you want to save time and money the next time you purchase a car, link to my car buying guide in the description down below. Let's get into it. Let's start things off with the EV specs. So we have an 81 kilowatt hour battery pack paired to a dual electric motor setup. This provides the car with 330 miles of electric driving range and then 384 horsepower and 376 pound feet of torque. And being fully electric, the Model Y comes with a front trunk because you don't have to have an engine up front, which obviously adds to the practicality. Now, before we go over the front end of the Model Y, I do want to mention, if you want to see more videos just like this, then I recommend you subscribe because I post content every single day. Now, starting off with the paint color, it actually looks pretty cool with the metallic flake that it has. And then we've got the Model Y's signature headlights that obviously shares with the Model 3 Tesla logo there. And then everything's closed off on the front end because it's fully electric, it helps out with aerodynamic efficiency. And then we do have fog lights on the front end. Now, putting it all together, I'd never call the Model Y beautiful by any means, but it's functional with the design. Tire and wheel setup on this is 255, 45, 19 in the front and over in the rear. And being the long range model means that the wheel is almost completely closed off to help out with aerodynamic efficiency. And even the little side camera here, you guys can see how it's shaped. That also actually helps out with aerodynamic efficiency and having the door handles flush with the bodywork also helps. But here's your side view with the Model Y. And I've said this in videos in the past and I'll say it again, it really does look like a penguin that's on its belly. I mean, literally you can see that that's like the little tail that flips up with the penguins and everything. Like once you see it, you can't unsee it. Now this is normally where I go over the key fob, but being a Tesla, this one doesn't have a key fob. You can buy one, you have to pay extra for it, but you got this little card fob, we'll, that's what we'll call it. Now popping into the cargo area, you guys can see that we have a cargo cover built in from the factory. And if we pick up this little, Leather strap, you guys can see we've got storage down below. Lots of storage space here on the Model Y. I think it's quite impressive, actually. And then when you're all done, all you have to do is just press this button right here, and that will lower the hatch right back down. Now I've got the taillights that are shared again with the Model 3. You got your dual motor badge here, and then you got your Tesla badge there in the center. And when you put it all together, I mean, you guys can let me know what you think about the Model Y, but like I said, I feel like it's more function rather than form. Now taking a look at the door panel, it's pretty interesting. You guys can see here, frameless windows and then soft touch here at the top. And look at the trim down below. And then we got the electronic door popper here. And then here are these seats, nice padding all down the center portion. And then you guys can see legroom back here is pretty good. And then we also have a little storage pocket. And then we got some vents here in the center with some USBs. And then headroom back here is actually really good. And last but not least, we got a cup holder armrest. Now taking a look at the front door panel, you guys can see again with the soft touch here and then look at the wood trim down below and then the insert right here, it's a better look at that and then the padding. Got all of our window controls here and then again the electronic door popper. And then here's the front seat, you can see darker stitching so that it's all kind of just simplistic, all matches and then you do have power adjustments there on the side of the seat and then pretty normal looking pedals. Now taking a look at the steering wheel, soft touch all around. You've got the multi-function controls on the steering wheel. And then we have the column shifter there just behind. Uh, so again, very minimalist. And speaking of minimalist, look at the dash here, just with the wood trim and everything. And obviously there's no heads up display. There's no <laughs> cage cluster. Like it's just you and the windshield. And this is because everything is built into the infotainment screen. You guys saw earlier how I opened up the front. You can also open up the trunk and then just the car in general. And I like how you can do a little spin thing with the car. That's kind of fun. Um, but, you know, I'd say that this is pretty easy to use. I like how you've got like a shortcut for the climate so you can instantly pull that up. That makes that uh, really easy to use. You do have heated seats and heated steering wheel. No ventilated seats. You'd have to have perforated seats to have that. Uh, but anyways, you guys can see all the rest of the controls here. Um, this obviously is for the mirror adjustment and everything. Like I said, that's kind of where those multi-function controls come in. And this is how you even open up the glove box which uh, yeah, looks like it's pretty normal there. Um, but the interesting stuff is going to be with the drive modes, obviously. So you've got your standard and then your chill with the acceleration. There's no sport mode with this because again, this is supposed to be all about getting as much range as possible, hence the long range model. Um, but I feel like this is pretty self-explanatory overall. Like all the stuff makes sense. Looks like this one's got the uh, 
full self-driving that uh, Tesla's been promising for <laughs> years at this point. Um, but yeah, lots of controls built into the infotainment system. It's good that Tesla spent a lot of time on the UI because it makes it so that it's okay that it's all in the screen, if that makes sense. Then we got some storage down below and even more storage right here. Lots of storage here in the Model Y. I think that's kind of like a theme. Cup holders, and then here in the back, and then you guys can see the stitching goes on the side. And I guess we'll actually have to go uh, back here to the little glove box setup so you guys can see, I guess, the space in here. And I wonder if it's got the, yeah, we got the original window sticker, so we'll see how much this one uh, ended up costing originally. And on top we got a mirror, and we have the interesting sun visors, which are like curved. Um, glass roof at the top as well. So here's our window sticker for the Model Y long range. Um, you guys can see the standard equipment. And here was the total original MSRP in this one, $67,000. This was before the price cuts because this was built last year. So uh, yeah, I don't know what this, it looks like it says like 56 here on the window sticker. I don't know what that's supposed to be. But anyways, <laughs> let's, let's drive it. Well, let's talk about visibility before we set off. Here's visibility over the hood, both of the mirrors, and then throughout the rest of the rear. And, well, we are going to set off. So, um, since doing my first review on a Tesla Model Y long range, um, I think it was earlier this year, I've had a chance to drive quite a few more EVs. And so I wanted to uh, revisit this. The reason why I wanted to revisit the Model Y is obviously Tesla, right? They're the big dog when it comes to EVs. And so I wanted to see how I feel about the Tesla after, again, having a chance to review even more electric vehicles. I do like the uh, turn signal camera. I think that's a pretty cool feature. What I will say that's still annoying about the Model Y and the Model 3 is the fact that everything's in the screen, like there's no gauge cluster. You know, the, the Model S Plaid, for example, they put like a gauge cluster in the center. Uh, it's, it's just a simple thing that like, it just makes sense in a car. Like having to look to the side, it's it can be a little bit disorienting at times. It's not like the worst thing on the planet, but you know, it can be a little bit annoying. Yeah, just like most electric cars, acceleration's really smooth, obviously. Get all the power and all the torque right off the bat. Suspension's pretty good as well yeah the region also pretty dang aggressive just getting a little bit of space here okay yeah even though it's not the performance model it's still got really good performance when it comes to acceleration it's like this is more than enough uh, when it comes to acceleration the turn signal a little bit annoying sometimes to be honest um, just with the actuation on it's not the worst thing ever I've, I've had worse turn signals than this but still a little bit annoying you know on the highway here I mean, like, yeah, if you needed to pass someone, you'd be more than fine. It's It's got really good passing power. I will say, though, the suspension comfort's not that great compared to some other electric cars that I have driven on the market. And so, yeah, I think this is, again, having another drive in this after a little bit, I think this is a, a good thing for me because now I can kind of mentally compare this to some other stuff that I've experienced. Okay, as I was saying, uh, Tesla, the mainstay in the electric world, right? The top dog. How does it compare now that we have a bunch of other EVs out in the market? And well, here's the deal. Tesla still has a lot going for it that other brands don't have. The range with this is great. Like over 300 miles of range is strong. Uh, the acceleration also really strong. And then on top of that, you know, the, the tech with this, it's, again, it's not that it's bad, but some of it's not the most user-friendly. Again, once you get used to it, you get used to it. I will say that. Uh, so in, in the self-driving tech, it's right there with the other automakers. I know some people are gonna say that Tesla's is better. From what I've experienced, it's, it's right there with other automakers. It's got its faults, just like the other automakers, you know, quote unquote, self-driving, even though there's not really self-driving. Uh, so with that being said, is it still worth it to buy a Tesla, especially, you know, the long range, right? This is, in my opinion, the best Tesla to buy because electric cars are all about range. Performance, it, like I know they've made some cool performance electric cars, but it's so pointless. With vehicles that you have to spend, you know, at least if you have a fast charge, you have to spend at least an hour to charge. The saying is with these electric vehicles where you have to spend so much time charging them, right? Range is more important than anything else because the more range you have, the better the car is, right? From a, from a use perspective. Um, so with that being said, 
Tesla still has a charging network, right? And so like, and the, and the range is, is super good. Um, it seems like other automakers are struggling to get, you know, the range that Tesla has with their cars. Uh, and so, you know, I still think it's, I still think Tesla is, even though I'm not like a Tesla fanboy by any means, I actually don't like the cars all that much. There's still a lot of, you know, there's still a pretty big argument to go Tesla in this market um, with the current charging infrastructure that we have and with Tesla's price cuts, like the value with this car is actually really strong uh, in today's market. With that being said, it's not the best EV from a driving perspective. There are EVs that just the acceleration's better if that makes sense it's it's hard to explain but just better uh, and then on top of the acceleration being better the range is better and all of that the driving dynamics the ride quality uh, this all everything that makes a car like a good car there there's other you know electric cars that are better than tesla but tesla still has the charging infrastructure still has the range still has a battery technology that just is ahead of a lot of the other OEMs. Let me know what you guys think about the whole Tesla situation. Let me know if you'd still buy a Tesla or if you'd rather buy an EV from an other automaker or if you even want to buy an EV in today's market.